After completing this series, you will become a professional bearing expert because throughout the series, we will learn all those things, all those steps that a professional bearing engineer follows to select the right type and size of bearing in any machine or product design. And not only right type and size of the bearing, also the right mounting fitment and suitable lubrication for a selected bearing and we call it bearing selection procedure. So hi there, this is James from Master Mechanical Design and welcome you to this master class series on bearing selection procedure. Yes, bearing selection procedure means we have to calculate and define everything for our bearing in any machine or product design like bearing type, size, mounting fitment, lubrication quantity and lubrication frequency. So as there are so many steps, I have divided this series into four parts the same as the steps. So in this video, in this part, we are going to learn how to select the right type of bearing as per the application and operating condition. And in the next part, we will learn how to sizing the selected bearing type or we can say how to calculate the bearing service rating life on the basis of operating parameters like load, speed and type of bearing. And in the third part, we will learn calculation of bearing mounting interference as per the application. Means what should be the fits of our bearing shaft and bearing housing that we define in our drawings. But in case of bearing, we have to also define GDNT controls like run out of our bearing seat and housing. So we will also learn how much run out control we should define our bearing shaft and bearing housing according to bearing precision grade. And next we will learn how to select the suitable lubrication type and how to calculate the lubrication quantity, lubrication initial quantity and frequency quantity and what should be the lubrication interval for a selected bearing. Last but not least, we will also learn what are the things we should keep in mind while designing a bearing block for easy disassembly and maintenance. So let us start the first step of bearing selection procedure, the selection of suitable bearing type. So selecting a bearing type is all about selecting a more suitable bearing type. Because for the same application, there can be multiple bearing options. But our aim should be select a more robust and more economical one as per the application and operating parameters. So what are the operating parameters we should look at in case of bearing? Number one is direction of the load like radial load, thrust load or combination of load. Number two, the amount of load over the bearing maximum load or we can say peak load as well as the minimum load. Yes, we should also consider the minimum load over the bearing because it's matter. We will discuss it later in this video. And number three, how much space is available means how much is the soft diameter and how much space we have as the hosing diameter. Number four, how much maximum speed is in application. Number fifth, is there any misalignment accommodation needed in bearing arrangement? If yes, then what kind of misalignment has to be accommodated like axial or angular or dynamic? Number six, the required degree of precision in application. Last but not least, what is the environment condition? Like it is clean or dusty or heat or underwater? so many parameters. So let's start from how to choose the suitable bearing type as per the direction of the load and amount of the load. So I have already explained all types of bearings as per the loading direction in bearings basic series. So here I am not going to repeat the same thing. Instead of that, we will refer this diagram. You can download this diagram from video description. This is from SKF. So in this diagram, there are almost all types of bearings and they are arranged at very specific position according to the direction of load and amount of load. In this diagram, the direction of load from top to bottom is radial. So the bearings at bottommost line is the pure radial bearing, which are needle roller bearing, carb toroidal bearing and cylindrical roller bearing. And the direction of load from right to left is the axial thrust load. So the bearings at leftmost line are the pure thrust bearing, which are thrust ball bearing, thrust needle bearing and thrust cylindrical bearing. 
and the bearings which are in between the pure radial and pure thrust line can take more or less combination of both radial and thrust load means each bearing can take load at an angle for example if the load is at 45 degree angular contact bearing is the more suitable and the bearing which are positioned at the outer line this line are the more suitable for heavy load and they all are roller bearing cylindrical roller bearing spherical roller bearing taper roller bearing and also cylindrical thrust bearing and the bearings which are positioned at the inner ring this ring are the ball bearings and having less load carrying capacity as compared to roller bearings so there are some key points that we should keep in mind first is roller bearings accommodate heavier load than the same sized ball bearing for example let's say shaft size is 20 mm so in deep groove ball bearing 6004 the basic dynamic load rating is 9.95 kN and for the same shaft size 20 mm in cylindrical roller bearing NUP204 the basic load dynamic rating is 28.5 kN which is much more than ball bearing basic dynamic load rating. We will discuss basic dynamic load rating in very detail in bearing selection calculation video. But as of now just for understanding if we will oversimplify the basic dynamic load rating we can define this the maximum load that a bearing can sustain for 1 million revolution before sign of any failure means under the same amount of load a roller bearing can give more life as compared to ball bearing as far as load is concerned second key point is all the bearings have contact angle less than 45 degree can be used for the pure radial load and all those bearing have contact angle larger than 45 degree can be used for pure thrust load and the third key point is for the combination of load if axial loading is small just a fraction of radial load less than the one fourth of bearing basic load dynamic rating in this case we can use deep glue ball bearing for example for sub diameter 20 mm deep glue ball bearing 6004 can be used if the axial load would be less than one fourth of 9.95 kN which is its basic dynamic load rating means less than 2.4 kN. So in this case we can use deep groove ball bearing in combined loading condition. But for a large axial load component we should use pairs of universal mast angular contact bearing or mast set of taper roller bearing or double row angular contact bearing. For more detail on angular contact bearings you can watch these videos. And now the fourth key point we should always check minimum load of the application because the bearing should be always under a minimum load in running condition otherwise the bearing will not properly function bearing rolling elements like ball or roller will start skidding which means the sliding of rolling elements in raceway without rolling and we call this minimum required load the requisite load for low speed applications minimum loads do not influence too much but importance of applying a minimum load is greater in application where there are repeat acceleration or repeat start or stop also in applications where a speed exceed 50 percent of the bearing limiting speed and the requisite load the minimum load should be at least one to two percent of basic dynamic load rating c means 0.01 to 0.02 times of dynamic load rating for example here in 6004 deep groove ball bearing the minimum load factor kr is 0.025 means the requisite load is 0.025 into 9.95 kN 0.248 kN means 248 N or we can say 24.8 kg means we should not run deep group ball bearing 6004 if minimum load of bearing is less than 24.8 kg especially if the bearing speed is exceed 50 percent of the limiting speed which is 24,000 rpm means the 50 percent is 12,000 rpm so what we will do if our application load is very less 
less than the minimum load, less than the requisite load. For example, for the same sub diameter 20 mm, the radial load is let's say only 5 kg. Also, the speed is more than 50% of limiting speed, let's say 15,000 rpm. So, what is the solution? So, the solution is we should preload the bearing and we cannot easily preload all types of bearing. So, in this situation, it is better to select a bearing type which can be easily preload, preload in control manner like pairs of universal massed angular contact ball bearing. So yes, in this example, we should use pairs of universal massed angular contact bearing instead of deep groove ball bearing even though the load is pure radial. So these were all the key points that we should keep in mind when selecting the bearing type on the basis of direction of the load and amount of the load. And now let's understand the bearing selection as per the space point of view. So first of all, if the shaft size is less than 10 mm, then we have only limited options of bearing type, which are deep groom ball bearing, needle ruler bearing, self-aligning ball bearing, and thrust ball bearing. Means if the sub diameter is less than 10 mm, we cannot use angular contact bearing or taper roller bearing. And if the sub size is more than 10 mm, then we will have all types of bearing option. Second, in case of very limited radial space, we should select needle roller bearing. And now let's understand the selection of bearing type as per the speed point of view. So the every bearing have their own speed limit. And we should not run the bearing above the speed limit. Otherwise the bearing will fail very early. And there are mainly two speed limits of the bearing. The one is the reference speed and second is the limiting speed. And we can find this speed limit in every bearing data set. Like here for bearing 6004, the reference speed is 38,000 rpm and the limiting speed is 24,000 rpm. So what does mean of reference speed and limiting speed? So the reference speed is based on thermal condition, means the speed capability of a bearing determined by bearing operating temperature. And reference speed can be adjustable by changing in lubrication conditions, but we should not run the bearing of a reference speed. And the limiting speed of a bearing is the mechanical speed limit of bearing. And limiting speed is determined by many factors like the form stability or strength of cage, also the lubrication of cage guide surface, also the centrifugal force acting on rolling elements. So our selected bearing operating speed should be less than these both limits. Next is the selection of bearing in case of misalignment condition. And misalignment conditions are created especially in long shaft bearing arrangement like axial misalignment, angular misalignment or dynamic misalignment between both end of the shaft. And there is a detailed video on bearing for misalignment condition, you can watch it later. So here I am giving you only key points. So in case of axial misalignment, at one end of the shaft we should use locating bearing like deep grow ball bearing or pairs of angular contact bearing and at the another end either use the locating bearing in floating arrangement within the bearing housing or use the bearing type which allow the axial movement within the bearing like cylindrical roller bearing without flange needle roller bearing to compensate the axial misalignment. And in case of angular static misalignment condition, use alignment bearing at the both end of the sub, like insert bearing, insert deep groove ball bearing. And for the dynamic misalignment condition, use self-aligning ball bearing or spherical roller bearing at the both end, or the carved radial bearing at the one end in case of combined angular as well as axial misalignment. And now, after selecting the right type of bearing, we should also consider to choose the right precision grade for the selected bearing. Precision grades define the bearing dimensional and running accuracy. And the grades are normal grade, P6, P5 and P4. Lesser number is the more precision grade, means high dimensional accuracy, which manufacturers maintains during the manufacturing and assembly. 
So in machine tooling applications like CNC machines go for higher precision grade like P5 or even more than that like super precision grade. Last but not least we should also consider the selection of bearing as per the environment condition like the bearing seal selection. For dusty environment we should consider seal seal and for the water or humidity condition we should consider contact sealed and for the underwater application go with stainless steel or ceramic bearing with complete sealed bearing. So just for quick summary selection of bearing in any machine design should not be only based on the direction of load like radial load, thrust load or combination of load all which we should consider all the parameters like direction of the load, amount of the load, maximum load, minimum load and make sure the bearing should have the minimum load otherwise preloading may be required or maybe we have to go for the bearing type which can be preloaded in control way. Then we should also check the speed limit of the bearing and the speed limit of bearing should be below the both type of speed limit, reference speed limit and mechanical speed limit. Then we should also check the available space in radial as well as axial direction. And also what kind of misalignment can be in bearing arrangement, especially if the shaft length is larger. And also choose the right bearing precision grade as per the application. For the normal applications do not go for a higher precision grade, cost would be increased. And last but not least we should also consider the bearing material and seal type as per the environmental condition. So this was the first step of bearing selection procedure, selecting the right type of bearing. And we have covered almost all the specs for selecting the right type of bearing. And I hope this video was useful to you and if it was please give us a like. And the next part the sizing of bearing should be on your screen or you can check the description. And thank you so much for the watching. And yes, if you notice this is a new setup, actually I recently changed my apartment.